Hey guys, it's Anthony back with another market update. And today's video, we're talking about where the market went this past week, where we think the market's gonna go in this coming week. And if you're looking to become a consistently profitable trader, definitely hit that subscribe button. I personally trade ES and NASDAQ futures. So if you trade that, you definitely wanna subscribe. Uh, it's taken me two years to become consistently profitable, lots of lessons learned, lots of trial and error, courses paid for. But if you're not profitable yet, I think you will be over time if you just stick with it. Without further ado, let's dive into the charts. So we're taking a look at ES on the daily chart. And last week, we did have some weakness, so I said that I was looking for us to take out this recent low here at about 4060, and we chopped around, but definitely had some weakness. So if you can just see, we've been making lower highs ever since that Wednesday where the CPI came out. We pushed up all the way to about 4173. I said in the last video that we could possibly get up to like 4180 before it continued back down, and I really do think that May 1st top is in at uh, 4208. So from there, I am holding my short position and I'm fully in it. Average of 41.45. So just about entry here, stopping above that recent high at 42.10. And I am still looking for that 40.20 area at some point by the end of May. So it looks like at about a two to one where we come down about 40.20, look targeting that fair value gap down on the four hour chart. So if I just zoom into the four hour chart real quick, you can see these, uh, I have a few fair value gaps drawn. One back here from about March 29th and another one March 29th in the morning. These fair value gaps down here and you'll just see from about 4019 to 4023 and then another one from about 4006 to about 4015. So these two right here, I'm targeting these at some point by the end of May. That target's based on the Dow Theory crash signal. So if you just go over to DJT, I've covered this in a few other videos. I'll link it actually in the in the cards above if you want to take a look at the strategy behind the Dow Theory crash signal. But essentially, all it means is the DJT, which is the Dow transports, are diverging from the US 30, which is the Dow. And that just means that every time we get a divergence where let's say DJT goes lower and makes lower highs, but US 30 is making higher highs, that's a divergence. And that can last two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, or even a month or two months at the most usually before we do get a big correction in the US 30 and NASDAQ and S&P 500 tend to follow. So as you can see from about March 6th to today, say May 12th, that's just over two months and we've been consistently making lower highs and lower lows on DJT. And then if you go over to US 30 from March 6th, from March 6th to today, consistently making higher highs. And then just recently, US 30 has been falling apart but you can still see we are going higher from that March 6th date on the US 30. And then same thing goes for ES. Right here from March 6th, where my mouse is there, to the Friday, May 12th, we've been going higher, and then transport's still been going lower. So the divergence is still playing out. Again, every time this does happen, there's about a 5% sell-off, 6%, maybe even more, in the next 20 to 30 days. Sometimes it happens faster, sometimes it happens slower. And it, it starts from the day of the high. So day of the high was May 1st, so about 20 days, 30 days tops, we will fall about 5%, maybe 6% from those highs. That's just back testing the Dow theory. So you can go ahead and look at every time there was a divergence with DJT and US 30, how much of a percentage of sell-off happened on ES and NASDAQ. You can go ahead and back test something like that, which I did in the past. And the average is about a 6% fall, honestly, on, on ES from the, the highs and it happened anywhere from, from 10 days to, to 20, maybe 30 days tops. So I'm just doing something a little bit less where we're lo looking at, say, a 5% drop from the high in the next 20 days. And that would look like about from 42.06, 5% down to bring us down to 4,000 on the dot. Uh, and 20 days from the May, the May 1st high would be about May 21st, May 22nd. That's why I have this 39.80 to 40.20 target by that date. If you're new here, that's where I got that target from, and I'll link it in the cards above where I explained this in the past. So now we cover DJT, I wanna look at the, the VIX. So this is looking good for the short because the VIX bottomed and we're really pushing up now, and that's what I wanted to see. We continue to make lower lows uh, on the VIX, and now we finally got a good push up. And after this push up on the daily chart, we're just, ba we're just basically back testing this area at 16 and a half and we're finding support on the VIX. So I think in the next two weeks, maybe even this week, but if you just look at the VIX, like we pushed up and now we're, we're 
just making a higher low and we're starting to curl back up again. So I'm looking for us to push up in the VIX to make a, another higher high, let's say 22 at some point in the next two weeks. And every time the VIX goes up, the market goes down. And then we go over to the dollar. If you take a look at the dollar, this is finally pushing up. Like I said previously, we wanted to see us bottom and really start to push up and we're just hanging around those lows. But I said that everything looked good because we didn't take out those recent lows, we're still putting in higher lows. Past two days, we finally got the dollar breakout and that's exactly what we wanted to see. We're actually going up faster than I thought. So every time the dollar goes up, NASDAQ gets, NASDAQ suffers actually more than ES, but both of them tend to go down when the dollar goes up. So now that we are pushing up, we're already close to that 103 area and that was my first target. So I expect now in the next two weeks, we're just gonna continue to push up. I don't know how high we're gonna go on the dollar. The question is, are we gonna go all the way up to this 106 area and take up that high? Or are we gonna put in a, in a lower high and just go to the 104, maybe 105 area and then continue lower? But again, as long as the dollar is, is pushing up, we can be more confident in the short on ES and NASDAQ. So this is a great sign. Every time we get the dollar breakout, typically a lot of pain. Actually, I want to show you something real quick. If you just look at the last dollar breakout, February 2nd. February 2nd was the day of the last top on uh, S&P 500 and NASDAQ. And you can just see this, this massive green bar here, February 2nd on the dollar. We made a low, pushed up, broke out, and just look from February 2nd to the high in the dollar. So February 2nd to March 7th, March 8th. So if you go look from February 2nd to March 8th, from February 2nd, we made a high of 42.09, and then March 7th made a, a low of 39.82. So we fell over 200 points, about 210 points, from February 2nd to March 7th, and that was all when the dollar had bottomed and then made the, the high. So the dollar bottomed, and we're pushing up now. So we could we could honestly sell off another 200 points from the high. So again, all these things are pointing towards us pushing lower. On, on yes. So again, just got confirmation with the dollar. Now let's take a look at HYG. I'm just gonna take a look at HYG and the put to call ratio last, just to make sure we have more confirmation. Again, everything looks great here. We have a lot of weakness on HYG. You can clearly see that we are pushing lower. Just look from left to right, March 31st to that May 12th. We're looking primed to just break lower. Haven't done that yet, but it's really close. So if you just compare HYG, which is smart money flow to ES, you can see, yes, it looks like we're still holding up. We're trading sideways, but HYG, which is basically acting like internals, ha has a ton of weakness. So once this breaks down, you can have a lot more confidence holding shorts. The last two things I wanna cover was the news that's coming out and then the put to call ratio. So for news, it's honestly light news compared to the past weeks. So Monday, not a whole lot. And then Tuesday, we have Canadian news, it's like CPI but then US is core retail sales and retail sales month over month at 8.30. Wednesday, we don't have a lot of news, but then Thursday is unemployment claims and then some 10 a.m. news. But then Friday, we have Jerome Powell speaking at 11. I don't know what's gonna happen there, what he's gonna say, but anyways, there's not, not a whole lot of news that's gonna move the market this week compared to the previous weeks at least, so that's good. But then the last thing I wanted to cover was the put to call ratio. So as you can see, every time we make a higher low, on the put to call ratio. That's a signal that we wanna stop out a lot of people who are long, because once we have a big drop in put to call ratio, it just means that a lot of people close their puts, which means there's a lot less people positioned for shorts. When there's a lot less people positioned for shorts, the market makers wanna stop out people who are long. So what they do is a rapid drop from the highs. So that's why this is looking good for the next two weeks, because last time we, had, we were really high, I made a last video when we actually bottomed, and I said that put to call ratio was a little high, so we wanna stop out shorts by pushing higher. Now the reverse has happened. Put to call ratio dropped rapidly, so now there's likely a big drop gonna happen to stop out longs. This is exactly what I wanna see. And again, go ahead and back test this. I said in previous videos, if you just go ahead and look at every time we started to trend up on the put to call ratio, if you go look at the day of the bottom on the put to call ratio, that's where we had a market top, and if you go look at a top on the ratio, that's where we had a market bottom. So just see where we are relative to previous times. We're very low, which means that we're very close to a market top. So again, these are all great things for allowing us to keep holding our short. That's gonna to conclude today's video. So if you take a look at the trade, we are holding short 41.45 average, targeting 40.20 at some point by the end of May, stop being 42.10, holding about a two to one risk reward ratio, Again, everything's looking great to hold the short. 
Give this video a thumbs up if you appreciate it. Look out for the next video coming out Wednesday night or Thursday morning. Subscribe for more videos just like this. Again, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.